feel good about what we're doing. We la, hmm. we la started uh, some years ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, we started 20, 2009. 2009. Yes, um, but when we started, we started, like you rightly said, as a, like a pressure group hmm. for, to campaign for the rights of women and children. They will give free legal services. Okay, ma'am. Legal aid to the, the needy and the underprivileged. Uh, we'll go to prison to mm. give uh, free legal services to defend them and get some of them released. Then uh, we went to court to challenge some uh, uh, laws that mm. uh, are discriminatory against women and children in society. And so we were able to make our impact and we have been making our impact in the area of the laws affecting women and children in Nigeria. Regulation 127 provides that a policewoman should not become pregnant. Can you imagine? Uh -huh. uh, 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 before three years, I mean, uh, why get they the get into police uh, force. But the law does not affect mm. the media male counterparts. Okay. Unfortunately, there was uh, a lady that uh, became pregnant. Mm. So we had to challenge it on an Abia, we challenged the law in court, and the court said, no, that law is discriminatory <laughs> and it should be struck down. And so the law has since been struck down. Again, two or three, a few years ago, we also went to court to challenge Regulation 124. That regulation specifies that a woman police that desires to get married should bring the husband to be mm. before her superior officer, who will approve. Can you imagine? And that same law does not affect their male counterpart. And we said no. Any parent, any guidance that refuses to send his or her child to school or allows the child to go to school is guilty of an offense that is punishable by three years in prison. Jesus. And Section 368 of that child's right law also specifies that the government shall compel hmm. every child to be in school. In other words, when the government notices any child that is hawking or out of school in the period of school, school hour, the government has the duty. There is a body that should be set up by the government that should monitor the implementation of the child's rights law in Lagos State and Child's Rights Act in Nigeria. They will send for you. They will remind you, you have an appointment with your NHS. You have your, appoint your appointment with your surgeon. You have an appointment, so and this will be also at the expense of the government. They pay, the government paid for it yeah. because the the money of the state yes. is for the benefits of the people of the citizen. Yes, mm. but our leaders have forgotten that they are mere trustees mm. holding this money in trustship for the people of the land, for the especially the less privileged. But they turn the money, which is a, 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 a illegal trust ship, they turn the money into their personal, for their personal use, and they use the money. So I am saying the government has failed the people. Then of course, the religious leaders are not doing well enough. Oh, yes, and yes, I specifically yes. want to mention this, and I'm not sure too many people okay, know about this law in Lagos, under the Lagos State Criminal Law. I think section. 230, I'm not very sure of that section now. Any man that impregnates a woman and refuses to take care of that woman and the child in her womb is committing an offense that is punishable with three years in imprisonment. No, I can't believe it. Yes, and so I've been begging people, come, speak out. <laughs> speak out if anybody impregnates you and disappears. Please speak out, contact a non-governmental organization. It is an offense. It is an offense and it is punishable with a jeta. So I'm saying they want it to men there. If you go and impregnate a woman and you refuse to take responsibility, hmm. you are committing an offense. It will earn you a three year jail term. Especially most of these musicians and entertainers. Especially <laughs> musicians and entertainers. <laughs>
It's another very wonderful, lovely day today on our channel as we meet a very wonderful, lovely woman. A woman of impeccable achievements. A woman that her second name is almost like activism and law. Yesterday was a very great day in the life of a lot of people, especially the underprivileged people of Nigeria, when the women Empowerment and Legal Aid, WELA, had a program for young people that went through trainings in several endeavors, some in shoemaking, some in fashion designing, and some in uh, bakery, and etc., etc. It was just one of the biggest occasions in a very small but popular neighborhood in Aege. And people from across the tribes, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, benefited from this Wela initiative. And uh, it was one thing that gave a new opening to every other people, every other person, I mean, that came to the event for what happened and how some people emerged after their training. I'm talking about our mother, the initiator of Wela herself, Barista Reverend, Fumi Falano, S-A-N. She is the wife of a legal icon, a legal guru, a man that his name is too hush, even to explain. I'm feeling goose people as I'm mentioning his name now, in the person of Barista, Chief Femi Falano, a Nigerian jurist, and one of the icon, and if not one of the few living legends of legal and uh, activism law in Nigeria. We are privileged today because she's a very busy person. After chasing in the last 24 hours, we've been begging, we've been appealing to her aides. She has no time, but thank God she's giving us a very humble moment now. And we want to thank everybody around her for this wonderful moment to speak with her. Uh, Mommy, we are so happy for you today. God bless you. Thank you very much. First and foremost, when I saw what happened yesterday, when we came into that place, we came, we didn't know it was going to be a very big event, and we saw all the children, almost 30 children, that uh, gained from that wonderful innovation. And uh, when Wella started some uh, 10 years ago, if I'm not wrong, I never envisaged, we, many people never envisaged you are going to go this far because primarily it was to be a legal uh, advancement or legal aid for women and children under uh, serious challenges. But eventually, you now added the economic aspect. And everybody is wondering that how and what does it take to achieve what happened yesterday. So how did you feel yesterday with what? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, well, I felt good, and I feel good about what we're doing. Well, uh, hmm. well I started uh, some years ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, we started 20, 2009. 2009. Yes, um, but when we started, we started, like you rightly said, as a, like a pressure group hmm. for, to campaign for the rights of women and children. They will give free legal services, okay, ma legal aid to the, the needy and the underprivileged. Uh, we will go to prison to mm. give uh, free legal services to defend them and get some of them released. Then uh, we went to court to challenge some uh, uh, laws that mm. uh, are discriminatory against women and children in society. So we were able to make our impact, and we have been making our impact in the area of the laws affecting women and children in Nigeria. But uh, as time went on, we mm. discovered that um, those people we were able to salvage from prison, when we get them out of prison, or those who were able to intervene, when we intervene on their behalf, like survivors of uh, domestic violence, yes, or survivors of rape or another thing of violence in the society, we discover that when we intervene on their behalf and we're able to get them out of the problem, out of the violence, uh, it becomes impossible. Usually, they will find it impossible to rehabilitate themselves into the society. Yeah. Because having spent some time in prison, they, they, would, uh, lost, they would have lost contact yeah. with, their, uh, with their relatives and, of course, with a life of uh, sustaining themselves. Mm. So we decided to start uh, a vocational training institute. 
and as a matter of fact, to also rehabilitate them into the society. Mm -hmm. So we built a school, well, we call it the Lega, uh, the Wela Complex. It's a home in that school where we have, uh, where the building you saw yeah. at, uh, I saw at yesterday. At Anoluakpo Street. At Anoluakpo number 20, uh, Anoluakpo Street, Agege, off for Tubu bus stop. Yeah. Uh, we have the Wela building. The Wela building houses the Institute of uh, Vocational Training for survivors of domestic violence mm. and survivors of violence in the society. Yes, and those who have been able to, who have been able to rescue from uh, violence either in the society or in their various homes and they have no way mm. to stay, we also have a home for them. Can you imagine? So we have a makeshift hostel Hmm. Hostel for victims or the survivors, we call them survivors, survivors of domestic violence or violence in the society, as well as training school for them. So when we bring them out of prison or we're able to intervene on their behalf and we get them out of the violence, out of the ugly situation, uh, we don't send them away into the society like that because okay. they will be almost useless to themselves. Hmm. So we put them uh, into the institute where we train them, we have different departments, we have the tailoring department, the catering department, shoemaking department. You saw them. Yeah, yesterday. I saw everything. Yeah, the cobbler dressing. department, the yes, ICT department. I mean, very huge. Yes, and we have uh, uh, instructors, many instructors that uh, teach them. But one of so, the big chefs was there yesterday yes, in Lagos. Yes, so we take them through a training of at least six months. Hmm. And upon graduation, we will buy their machines for them. Mm. So yesterday, I'm sure you saw those who graduated, we bought fact, sewing machines, shoemaking machines, we saw a lot. Uh, ovens for baking, and so many other uh, instrument tools or articles of uh, 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 trade. So when we give them these machines, some of them, we also give them money. Mm. And so we send them out to go and start Send them off, into the world to, to start, go and start off life. Afresh. So it becomes easy for them to get themselves rehabilitated and they become economically independent. That, that is economic emancipation. Emancipation. So they start a new life. And uh, so we, we believe that is a way of properly reconstructing them to make them be able to fit in the society. So those are the things we do. Yeah. And beyond that, like I said, we have a hostel. Those who have nowhere to go, when okay. they leave prison or they, they find themselves as a, a, a survivor of such violence, we put them in that home, in the hostel there. Hmm. And they stay in the hostel for three months to get them opportunity to be, find a convenient accommodation that will house them permanently outside the home. So that, those are the things we do. In fact, the whole event is just playing in my head. And uh, yesterday when I saw the bigness of that event. I was like, why is the media so silent on this kind of a humanitarian guest or a golden, noble humanitarian guest or as this, as that of Wella? Uh, I want to ask you that. Why did you think the media has not really made noise? Because that's why I fought all my way to say we have to make noise because it's not an easy task. I know you're a woman of many paths, very busy on different boards, but what do you think is happening? That yeah, we've, been in the, we've been in the media for, uh, for some time. Okay. I, I would say the media has been silent. Maybe yesterday's event was really not publicized. Okay, ma'am. Yes, it's an annual event, but yesterday event, because we've had a lot of events in the past uh, yeah. few months, yeah. so we didn't everything. publicize the one of yesterday. Maybe that was why we didn't see, okay. uh, but we have been in there. For example, we have once, some uh, outstanding cases hmm. that uh, uh, have really become local classicals hmm. in the areas of law, the laws affecting women in the society. For example, we went to court to challenge the law that... Yeah, 124. That, yeah, police, regulation, 124, regulation 124, yeah. regulation 127, at different times. The, the regulation, not... regulation 127 provides that a policewoman should not become pregnant. Can you imagine? Uh, 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 yeah. uh, before three years, I mean, uh, why get they the get into police uh, force? But the law does not affect mm. the media male counterparts. Okay. Unfortunately, there was uh, a lady that uh, became pregnant mm. 
Mm -hmm. So we had to challenge it on and Abia will challenge the law in court. And the court said, no, that law is discriminatory <laughs> and it should be struck down. And so the law has since been struck down. Again, two or three, a few years ago, we also went to court to challenge Regulation 124. That regulation specifies that a woman police that desires to get married should bring the husband to be mm -hmm. before her superior officer. Who will approve? Can you imagine? And that same law does not affect the American part. And we say no, any law, any regulation that specifies a condition should be applicable to both men and women because under the laws of this country, a man and a woman should be seen equal, should be equal before the law, section 42 of the constitution. Mm. And any law that is inconsistent with the letters and the spirit of the constitution of Nigeria is null and void. Mm. And so the court said that that law was inconsistent with the constitution of Nigeria and it was struck down. So we have had opportunities. And some years ago also, we went to court to challenge uh, uh, the federal government, that is Sarah, we went to court on behalf of Sarah, Sarah Panth, uh, the president of, the, of Nigeria, okay. to challenge the right of uh, a, uh, a Nigerian child to education. Hmm. Yeah. And, a lot of uh, them are hawking on the street. Hawking today. on the street. Hawking I was, discuss I was discussing with the, uh, a woman from Ministry of Women Affairs yesterday at the program. I yes, said, yeah. when you go out, you see your school children hawking on the street. Between and the age the, of 10, And the child's eight, right seven. law. Say that any child between the age of six mm. and 17 has no business being on the street during school hours. Oh, wow. Any parent, any guidance that refuses to send his or her child to school or allows the child to go to school is guilty of an offense that is punishable by three years in prison. Jeez. And Section 368 of that child's right law also specifies that the government shall compel mm. every child to be in school. In other words, when the government notices any child that is hockey or out of school in the period of school, school time, hour, the government has the duty. There is a body that should be set up by the government that should monitor the implementation of the child's rights law in Lagos State and Child's Rights Act in Nigeria. And this body should compel every child and, of course, vacate children from the streets during school hours to be in school. And so these are the things that we've been uh, campaigning against. And the court said yes, that education is the right of a child and it is justiciable. So these are the things we've been doing in the area of the law. And so we said we felt there was a need for us to move further in the area of economic empowerment. Before we go to economic empowerment, I see you as a son, as a person, as someone that challenges the sleeping legal Articles. I mean, there are some laws that are just sleeping. Yes. And people don't use them. People don't challenge them. Look at the regulation 127 and 124 and some other uh, amiable legal articles. Yeah, like I said, we're, our organization is Women Empowerment and Legal Aid. Okay, the Legal Aid area is the area of uh, protecting the rights of women and children. Mm. And now we notice that one of the sources of law in Nigeria is judicial precedent. What do I mean? When a matter goes to court, a, a principle goes to court, and it is pronounced upon by a court of law, it becomes the law on that issue. Okay. And we call it judicial precedent. So you can now cite it as a position of the law in case such principle comes up in another case, in, in another time. So we believe that the way to improve and to develop the rights of women and children in Nigeria, it's also to take such laws that are discriminatory to courts so that the court can look at them vis-a-vis -vis the constitution, which is the primary law, okay. the ground norm of Nigeria, look at it, juxtapose these laws with the constitution of Nigeria and see whether they are consistent with the letters and the uh, spirit of the constitution. Mm. And if these laws or these principles of law or whatever, uh, if they do not comply, or they do not agree with the principles and the spirit mm. of the constitution, the court of law will declare them null and void. Mm. And if the court so declares, it becomes the law. Mm. It becomes part of our law. And so we have been able to develop the laws affecting children and women in Nigeria a great deal.
Now, now, before we go back to uh, the issue of Falano and Falano Chiba, let me pick out something yes, You said something that is so striking, and uh, it is my opinion as well. You, you said that this community, we brought in a lot for you. You spent millions to buy those equipment, to train them. So we said to so properly rehabilitate them, there will be need for them to learn a vocation. And thereafter, we buy an instrument or machine, trade for them. We give them money. Some people want to trade. We ask them what type of trade do you want to start? So we give them money to start a trade, or we put them in school where they learn, and at the end of their learning period, we buy their machines for them, and they start off life. All the machines we buy for them, free, the training is free. Everything is free. We have been able to graduate about one more than six students. And the, but the indigenous people, the Yorubas, they appear not to. Be, the children there, when we got to that community yesterday, we saw a lot of people, some on drugs, and they were all hailing that, yeah, thank that you. beauty. So, what do you mean? Because we saw that most of the beneficiaries are houses, Igbos. And we discover, and I want to note today, because it's going to be on my record, that the bulk of our students here are Awusa. Is that not true? The Yoruba people, I'm sending a message to them now. The Yoruba people here, they do not want to learn anything. Most of them wow. are smoking in their hands around wow. there. Here, there, there, we will beg them. Apparently, we beg them. We try as much as possible to beg them, persuade them to come and learn. They will not stay. They will just move around there and beg and ask me for money. They smoke in their hair very regularly. If you look around, they, will, they are still coming. I'm sure they are hanging. And that's why I, 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 I therefore decided that uh, we will find the time to go and talk to the ballet. The ballet, yeah. yeah. They are ballet here to talk to them. So that tomorrow they will say, I set up this place for Awusa people. How do we do this? Because everywhere in Lagos now, you see most young people are on drugs in neighborhood and all that. How do we solve this problem? Our organization is detribalized. It's non-tribalized. Okay. And because of that, we do not discriminate against any tribe. Good. We, uh, uh, we admit uh, survivors of domestic violence from different parts of the country. A different tribe. Either you are Aousa, Yoruba, or Igbo. Or even Ibiobio. Or Ibiobio, any part, any part. But we noticed that because we had the option of citing the Wella building in Leki or VI or Ikoi, yeah. but we felt the place where our services would be needed most, most. where we have survivors of domestic violence, of or violence victims. in the society. Yes, they are victims. We call them victims. The people call them victims. We try not to label them victims. That's why we call them survivors. Okay, well. Yes, it's a place like Agege or Mushe. Yeah. And that was why we decided to cite Wella Building. It's a human rights building in uh, Agege. But we noticed from experience, since we started the school, the building there, mm. we noted that the bulk of people that present themselves to be helped to be rehabilitated are uh, the Aousas and the Igbos. And the bulk of the area boys, the destitutes we have there, the India Hem smokers are the Yorubas. So we try to campaign against and convert. Say no to drug, we try to persuade them, but we notice that this set of young boys, and that's why we've been talking to their parents. And uh, we want to have uh, a trip to the ballet of the okay. community. The traditional the leaders. Yes, so to please area. talk to the parents of this, especially the Yoruba boys. They constitute nuisance in that area. They smoke in their hair. They come to the, that school to beg for money. Sometimes they fight. People will take them 
We saw them yesterday. So praise Even when daddy them, came, they, they rushed be, him. Ah, they will be saying, Mama, <laughs> they acknowledge that the house is built for them, but they will not take the benefit of their house. They come there to beg for money. And I said, we are interested in not just giving you money like this, but we don't want to be giving you fish. We want to teach you how to fish. If you come, I will give you 1,000 naira, yeah. 2,000 naira, 3,000 3, naira every day, every week. You spend it. But we want to give you a, a, a tool. We want to give you a vocation. Yes, a sense of living. Yes, so that you can have and give you a tool to continue with it. So that you can be economically independent. And you can also become someone that will be touching lives and give back to the society in the future. Mm. But I think they are lazy and they are well deep into drugs. So these are the vices we find in that environment. Mm. Mm. And we, all we just need to do now, we have decided we will go around the religious homes, okay. around the, the churches there, okay, talk to their pastors to please campaign mm. to women, in that, or men and women there, to please let encourage their children to desist from this illegal act, this illicit drugs, mm. and come and take benefits of the place. They will go to mosque, let their fast, also talk to their people. Yeah. Because these are the areas, the places where they can also campaign. Yeah. They, get, they get to the grassroots through these religious places. Yes, that they should help us campaign, carry on our campaign, so that they would know that the facilities are put there, cited there. For their benefits. I'm very shocked at your level of humility and your sense of duty, despite your elitist position in the society. I mean, I want to ask you this question: that who failed when you look at this kind of children? Is it the parents or the church or the religious? The government, number the government? one. Okay. The government has failed. The government that does not have the responsibility and they are not responsive to the needs of the masses of the people of the society. In civilized communities, you won't, you won't find so many children out of school like that. Yeah. Because right from age six, as they are growing, the social worker will knock at your door in London or in America to tell you, because your birth was registered six years ago, they know there is a child in that home. Mm. They will knock at your door on the clock of six years. Your child is due for school. Mm. We have come to register your school. In mm. the community. They will register you for medical services, NHS, in the vicinity. They will knock. You are due to take immunization for your child. This, your child was delivered, so, so, so your child is due for immunization. They will send for you. They will remind you, you have an appointment with your NHS. You have your, appoint, your appointment with your surgeon. You have your appointment. So, and this will be also at the expense of the government. They pay. The government paid for it. Yeah. Because the, the money of the state yes. is for the benefits of the people. Of the citizen. Yes. Mm. But our leaders have forgotten that they are mere trustees mm. holding this money in trustship for the people of the land, for the, especially the less privileged. But they turn the money, which is a, 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 a illegal trustship, they turn the money into their personal money for their personal use, and they use the money. So I am saying the government has failed the people. Then of course, the religious leaders are not doing well enough. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, our religious leaders, they will clap our hands yes. for people yeah. yes. who come and donate money, not Just mind the where the money is coming the source from. source of the money. Yes. The sources. So, uh -huh. What are the things, what are the things we preach in our religious centers? Yes, ma'am. What are the things we condemn? What are the things we encourage? Yeah. What all these are things, even the social media and other things, we encourage vices. I agree and with so you. this goes I agree with you. deep into the society. And of course it the parents. The lifestyle. Yes. And of course the parents. A violent man today in the home beating that is perpetrate mommy, beating mommy, mommy in front of the was a son that witnessed the father and the mother. Oh was a son that was brought up in a violent way. He grows to become a violent man. So if we can bring our human rights teaching to the cradle, to the homes, let's begin to teach our children, the father, the child, 
Uh, the girl child is not inferior to the boy child, right from the cradle. When we were growing up, I, I think the th those things are changing now. Yes. The girl child will be asked to go and learn trade or mm. to go and hawk, mm. and the brother will be sent to school. And so this brought mm. disparity. That was in the 50s, 60s. Yes, in the yeah. levels of education of the man and the woman. And that is why we have many women who are uneducated, who are illiterate, and who are economically disempowered. Mm. But we also have gone beyond that. We also have another problem in the northern part of the country that would push the gay child to uh, marriage. Early marriage. Chase them Very out. Of, early. We pull them out of school. They pull them out of school and they send them. It is an offense under the uh, child's right law. I'm not even aware. A child's right law. are not aware. It is an offense. Hmm. Child marriage is an offense. A big a, offense. A big offense. Anybody that sends a child to marriage, a child that is below 18 to marriage, or mm. anybody that marries a child is committing an offense that is punished by seven years imprisonment. Mm. Sometimes there was this uh, uh, Senator Yerima <laughs> several years ago that married a 40 year old. We went to court. My organization went to court <laughs> to challenge it. And his excuse was that the girl was not a Nigerian child, that the girl was an Egyptian, <laughs> an English, a Nigerian, and the child's right act is a Nigerian law for the Nigerian child. Imagine. Yeah, oh, oh, that's an enlightened moon. So, yeah. but these are the things that happen in our society. Yes. So, those are the things, and I, and I want the public to also try as much as possible to join us in this uh, campaign against discrimination, uh, the hmm. campaign against discrimination against women and children in the society, campaign against violence. Yeah. Violence in the society, we have rape and all forms of violence. The violence in the home, white battery. And when we talk about violence in the home, it could be white battery, that is physical, yeah, physical. violence. It emotional. could be economic, it could, it be, could emotional, be emotional. Which is much more. Mm, terrible. Emotional is so much now. Terrible. High rise. Yes. Terrible. Even it could be economic if you refuse to provide the socioeconomic needs for your family. Yeah. That is a form of economic violence. You refuse to give your children uh, uh, food, uh, maintenance, education, even shelter. All this, all these are economic mm. violence. Mm. And all this, I want to remind Nigerians today, are uh, punishable under the law. In Lagos State, there is a law against domestic violence. Yep. Any of these that I've mentioned, physical, emotional, uh, uh, violence, physical violence, economic violence, any of these, we are meant to an offense under this law, and it's punishable, and if you jail term or a fine. Hmm. I, I love the way you put all these things out, but I want to call and I specifically yeah. want to mention this, and I'm not sure too many people okay, know about this law in Lagos under the Lagos State Criminal Law. I think section. 230, I'm not very sure of that section now. Any man that impregnates a woman and refuses to take care of that woman and the child in her womb is committing an offense that is punishable with three years in imprisonment. No, I can't believe it. Yes, and so I've been begging people, come, speak out. <laughs> speak out. If anybody impregnates you and disappears, please speak out. Contact a non government organization. It is an offense. It is an offense and it is punishable with a jeta. So I'm sending one to men there. If you go and impregnate a woman and you refuse to take responsibility, hmm. you are committing an offense. It will earn you a three years jail term. Especially most of these musicians and entertainers. Yeah, especially <laughs> musicians and entertainers <laughs> and many other men, irresponsible men that do this. In fact, I want to be always, I will always pray to God to allow me to be talking to you on this kind of awareness. Yes. Uh, uh, you see, there is a case that I've been handling in the last two years and I find it so funny. A, a woman had two kids for a musician, a gospel musician at that matter, and uh, there is no form of help. There's a lot of for, okay, we learned that it has always been a tradition. We, we investigated that those are other ten or eight women that have been put in family with that same manner. And the woman took him to, uh, what do they call that place in uh, Kenya? Um, family, whatever, whatever. And the family court. Uh, family the magistrate court. court. Yes. And the the family court, magistrate court. Yes, yeah, she took him to welfare. Oh, welfare. Then, okay. From welfare, the case now went to family court. Yes. And... For the past three years, they've been mangling it. It's like when the judge is becoming sympathetic, somehow the judge will be removed. They bring another person. It's like the guy. It's unfortunate. It's a, it's a bit that the guy was influencing it. 
and this guy is a, is a popular musician. I'm very sorry to mention his name. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, know? you may not bother to mention okay, his okay, name. Okay, now, yeah, what but, is but, happening now is that we now decided another person now said, Let's so show you for breach of promise to marry. The two children are there. Is he sends some mega amount to them? We're not there's another woman somewhere that I will sue him to a high court, but it's evading law and all that. So, I want to ask that is there any law that prohibits a man putting a woman in the family way only to abandon her or even promise her? I to just marry? mentioned the law now. I just it's a three year imprisonment. I just mentioned the law now. Criminal law of Lagos State.